The whole definition of depression, what constitutes it, it's basically a glass half empty, glass half full kind of thing. And so we have this arbitrary line we define as mental health by what might be defined as um, living consistent with nature's intent. That is, you are involved and addicted enough to keep you interested and excited to pursue, to consume, to play the game. The game is interesting, and certainly that's nature's course. But there's nothing, there's nothing philosophical about nature, and there's nothing, there's no truth that's built into that idea that you're accomplishing something by even existing. I mean, somebody could jump in front of a train, and I shouldn't say automatically, ah, they must be too depressed or too depressive. Maybe they've reached a point of clarity where they know they're accomplishing nothing. <laughs> that they're consuming more than they're producing. That their life has no productive purpose. I'm just saying that this is not a safe subject for cliche standards, standard standards, or whatever you want to say. The standards that have been imposed on us by a culture controlled by what I would consider way too optimistic. You know, way too undepressed, too blissful, too. Content, a really lousy definition of the word unacceptable. We see the culture with this tacky, tacky, silly culture we've created. We've seen what it does to, you know, to defend the American way of, you know, baseball and bullshit and hot dogs and apple pie nonsense. We kill people. We throw bullets into their brains and we smash their bodies to bits and we do all kinds of nonsense. There's no logic in that mental health. That healthy mentality that we're, you know, fighting for something. Admit what it is. It's an addiction. So, who's to say how full the glass is? I mean, is the glass a quarter full and three quarters empty? I mean, what's the right perspective to have? I don't think that can be defended、uh, precisely. I mean, I don't think we have any way of doing that precisely. And I guess I would argue that there's every indication logically. That the only thing keeping us in the game is our addiction, <laughs> and that there's nothing mentally healthy about addiction. There's nothing healthy that I feel good when I'm involved, caught up in. That then, okay, so now I'm mentally healthy because I'm caught in pursuing something, and the something is just some arbitrary definition of the cheese of the day. That can't be logically defended as the right perspective. Okay, is that so? We're going to use these words, right and wrong, more optimal or better? Because that was sort of the implication of your video that there's something. There's something to be critical of. There's something to be suspect if the person's glass is half empty. But I think they're going to be just as suspect if there's people too focused on the half full crap. Because theoretically, it could be argued that all of the half full is bullshit. Okay, it really is. It is bullshit. We are accomplishing nothing here. The only thing that keeps us in the game is addiction. Period. The need. The need has to be inspired in you. It isn't something that's a rational imposition. It's a completely irrational imposition. It's an imposition by a physical body, a DNA molecule. This is more complex than than you stated it or you outlined it. It's it's not as simple as negative thinking is bad and positive thinking is good because that makes you more likely to reproduce and inject yourself into the future and perpetuate just a silliness, a preposterous silliness. Look, it's about clarity. It's about defining the truth. Again, we're we're back there, and you can't say it is more clear to be more of an animal, more compliant with nature's intent. That you be caught up in the game. It might be greater clarity to be without ambition, to be without intense desire, without intense interest, and it certainly might be describable as clarity to find the whole thing disgusting and abhorrent, way too expensive. Like I said, you just have to look at the world, look at the look at the horror, the suffering, the the nastiness that's out there, and I think it could be. Easily argued, anyway, at least argued rationally and reasonably,、um, that somebody who would just find it unacceptable, simply unacceptable, could be defended as something other than depressed. That person's psychology might be negative compared to yours. It might be really negative compared to Pollyanna. 
but <laughs> that doesn't matter. It's not about those relative comparisons. It's about what the truth is. And, <laughs> you know, and that might be the real, that might be real clarity to be completely and thoroughly disgusted might be perfect clarity. So, uh, you know, I just, I, I found your argument sort of, yeah, it was just irritating because it just, it's, it's like you're saying that you know what normal is and that normal is right. Uh, you know, I mean, even defining normal is a little tricky, but to establish that some sort of majority meme is where we're all trying to strive for to be at least that, or at least as happy as, that's really not the standard. Maybe we should be goddamn miserable. Maybe the world deserves us to be miserable at it. Maybe we would make the world a better place if we were more miserable.